Okay, this is our final company for in our fi in the finals. Um, it's Stradio. Presenting for Stradio are CEO Jay Hyung Lee and Vice President of Business Development Leslie Grouthouse. Take it away, guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Hyung Lee. I'm a co-founder and the CEO at Stradio. Today, we are happy to introduce to the Link Square a portable pen-type low-cost spectroscopy that could be used with your smartphone for identifying pills. You might think that getting a prescription drug is a simple process. Doctors write the prescription, send it to the pharmacy, and you go pick it up. But you don't see the extra step behind the counter. A technician must fill the pills to the bottle, and a licensed pharmacy have to visually check whether they are correct. This extra step is very critical, and it takes lots of time and money because it's really hard to make it sure it's correct one. Between 40 million to 200 million incorrect prescriptions are dispensed annually, and because of this, lots of expense are occurred in the pharmacy and loss of pain to the patients, like permanent harm or deaths. This is the reason why we cannot get this step out of the way, so we, we need a solution to solve all this problem. Today, we introduced LinkSquare. LinkSquare will help make it easy for pharmacists to improve the efficiency of dispensing pills and also protect themselves and their patients to get it right pills to the patient. Let us show you the demo. You know what, actually, I'll, I'll be in the demo to show you the demo. Thank you. No, I don't need this. But can we switch to the overhead, please? All right, awesome, already there. OK, my name is Leslie, and I'm going to talk you through our demo to show you that with LinkSquare, anyone, even the pharmacy technician, can confirm the identity of medications. So let's pretend that we are in a pharmacy, and let's pretend that Jay over here is not the CEO of Stradio. Jay is a pharmacy technician, and today he actually needs to fill a prescription. He's going to fill a prescription for Viverin caffeine pills, which for today we'll assume require prescriptions. So Jay is going to use the LinkSquare to make sure that he's going to have the right pill. So the way that it works is that Jay selects the pill that he wants to scan, and he goes into our, he, sorry, he connects the app, and he goes in to the menu, and he selects the pill that he wants to scan, in this case, Viverin. So he's going to go, and he's going to point the link square at the pill, and he's going to press the scan button, and the lights kind of swirl to show you that the magic is working, and then when the magic is complete, you get the blinking lights, and we see that Jay has, in fact, not grabbed Viverin caffeine pills. Instead, he's grabbed something else, but it looks a lot like Viverin, so it's a good thing that he double-checked first. So Jay thinks for a while, and he starts to have a hunch that maybe he accidentally picked the generic pill instead. So Jay is going to go back into our app just to confirm his hunch, and he's going to select Maximum Strength Stay Awake, which is the generic for Viverin. And we do the whole process again. You point your uh, link square at your pill, and you press scan. The white lights working the magic. And then we're going to find out in a few seconds that Jay was correct with his hunch. That is actually the generic form of Viverin. So it's a good thing that he didn't give the wrong thing to a patient. And now, since we're in Las Vegas, we just have one more pill. It's a special pill that people in Las Vegas I hear enjoy. And it's called Viagra, made by our good friends at Pfizer. So when you're taking something like Viagra, you want to be like really sure that it's the right thing. It's very critically important to all the fun that you want to have later in the night that you can never tell anyone about ever again. So we're going to have Jay do our test, and let's see if we have the genuine article here. I think, I think he got it right this time. I don't know. Oh, yes. Pharmacy technician Jay has saved the day by providing genuine Viagra to his customer, who will now go out and have a great night on the strip. And so now I'm going to pass this back to Jay, and we're going to go back to the slides. As you have seen in the demo, link squares shine a bright light on a pill, and they collect the response data of all the weak things, like this. We call this spectral fingerprint. After we collect the fingerprint, we, we're trying to find the match in our database using our in-house uh, machine learning algorithm. If we find the match, we confirm the identity of a pill. Of course, spectroscopy technology has been around for more than 20 years. But they are huge like this. And sometimes the price of the spectroscopy can go over 30 to $40,000. 40, 
we're trying to make the spectroscopy small and also compatible with the smartphone so that you can have an easy access to it whenever you have a doubt on your pills or something else. The Linscan 1, the first version, is available, and we're going to start selling the product this quarter. We're currently overseeing the semi mass production of, of the Linker 1. To distribute to the uh, hospital, pharmacy, and care homes, we're going to sell the unit around $250 per unit with a few variable fees for the custom reference database. Looking into the future, we're also making Link Square 2. We're using our propriety sensor, which was funded by National Science Foundation. With Link Square 2, which is going to be launched in 2018, it can do a little bit more than what we just described today. It can also look into the component of the、uh, pills. And a lot more applications you can dream about by seeing the Link Square today. But today, we're very, very excited to show you Link Square 1 for the medication identification that can work with a smartphone. If you have any question about how it's working, please visit our website, linksquare.io, or please come to our booth, 5215, at the Eureka Park. Thank you very much. Do、uh, any of the judges want to try the caffeine pills? To, to <laughs> We all the want the caffeine pills. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, please. Jay, how big is your database of spectral fingerprints, and can you talk a little bit about how the ingestion process of new data goes in? So,、uh, So far, we have collected about 65 <laughs> pills of the database. So, one pill we have to scan more than a few hundred times, but we have 65 pills, and the accuracy of those、uh, databases is more than 98%. We understand that 98% is not the number that people are satisfied with, so we're working on to improve that at the moment. And in addition, actually, I just wanted to mention that we aren't creating a giant database of every pill in the world. We work with customers to set up custom databases for the pills that they actually need or the ones that they dispense the most. If I went to go out and buy some illegal drugs on the strip tonight, could I make sure that I'm getting the real thing? You know, this is actually a question that I get a lot. I have a lot of people, <laughs> I have a lot of people that say to me, so hypothetically, I have some cocaine. <laughs> yeah.、No. So the answer to that is, you know, it kind of depends on the illegal drugs. So what we use is、uh, spectral peaks and spectral data. So for drugs like cocaine and heroin, the peak is often a little bit beyond what we do with this sensor and this device. But those peaks will actually be covered by Link Square 2. So if you would like to develop a habit now, we'll help you out later. <laughs> so, so, so more seriously on that note,、um, there are foreign manufacturers of counterfeit drugs, you know, legal drugs. And if you have a product that can detect the counterfeit drug, you know, not produced by a you name it company, and pharmacies know about it and they can track it back to the origin, they're infringing other people's rights, but they're launching into the marketplace a counterfeit drug. That would be a value to, I think, the manufacturers of medication. So something、yeah. to think about. That's one of our business models. Yeah. Yeah, we, we hear a lot from people who are interested in detecting counterfeits, especially in developing regions. What is your value proposition? Uh, to the customer? Is, it a, in, is the customer a pharmacy or、mm. um, an individual? I, I, and I don't understand、uh, your revenue model. So all of that、uh, kind of ties together, I、sure. think. So I'll answer your first question about customers and then I'll let Jay take it、okay. for revenue model. So, in terms of customers,、uh, we look at in the US、uh, large retail pharmacies. So, right now, the process is that they have to have They, they have the pharmacy technician who fills the pills in the bottle, and then they have to get a registered pharmacist to come and visually say, okay, yeah, that looks correct. They're filling 25 prescriptions per hour. You want to catch the mistakes. But you don't want the pharmacist that you pay $150,000 a year coming and verifying pills instead of talking to patients about their problems. So they want to have someone like the pharmacy technician to be able to verify themselves. And your revenue model question?、Yeah. There you、so、go. We can sell the unit to $50 per unit,、uh, so it could go to both B2B and B2C. For the B2B, we're going to charge another custom database for, the, for them, but for the B2C, we're going to have the free app that you can download and test it out a few pills. But we're going to also have an in app purchase for the、uh, extra database if pe people want to use this, the,、uh, lots of pills. So, going back to your example in the pharmacy, right now,、um, does regulation state that the, pharmacy, that the pharmacist has to verify the pills? Yeah, so actually, that's an interesting question because the way that the pharmacy industry works in the United States is that each state has an individual board of pharmacy that has its individual way of wanting things done. And、right. we have customers that also are working with their insurance companies that have their own things that want to. Right, so then does your device supersede that regulation? Because even if a pharmacist has that device,、hmm. wouldn't the pharmacist has, have to verify the pills anyway? 
Uh, so we're working with customers right now, and this is this is a new, like a brand new world. And so what they're it, saying. I, I guess the, my my question is: Is that the proper use case for it? Mm. According to the customers that have talked to us, this is what they want to use it for, and they're working with their insurance companies and state boards of pharmacy to implement this model. Are you exploring any other models? Uh, so we do get asked from time to time if there's a way to integrate our device further upstream, like in, when you're dispensing pills just in the wholesaler, and that's something we would be interested in doing, but that's an extra technology step for us that we'd look to in the future. What, one comment and one question. Um, $250, that's a very attractive price point for a pharmacy to avoid liability that might result from filling a prescription that is improperly filled. So that's number one, I like that. Number two is you mentioned that some of the research was done at the National Science Foundation. Yes. Do you have all the rights that you need uh, for your product, all the licensing rights? Any, any? Did you check that? Did you do your diligence on that end? Uh, I don't know if you asked this question, but we filed more than six patents regarding the uh, technology. So we, we think we have a right to protect our technology. And already one patent has been registered in the US. Yeah, but if you're uh -huh. using some of the research from the National Science Foundation oh, oh. and they have rights on it and you're using it, no, I'm you sorry. might want to look into whether or not you've got, you know, okay, you yeah. need to take a license. Yeah. We're a National Science Foundation SBIR company. They fund technology development. They're not giving us any pill information. We're, we do all of that ourselves. So I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question, but that's the, that's the story for us. So I, I have a related question. You seem to have be a miniaturization play. There used to be these bigger machines that do this. What specifically have you invented that makes you able to put it in the small form factor? Yeah, I think that's a really good question for us because we invented two things. The first of all, we make all the optics, very sophisticated optics, to be one piece so that we can put everything to the handheld device. That's the one invention we, we did. The second thing is we have a clear pathway to increase the spectrum we can collect. That's called germanium-based IR sensor, and that was the uh, project that was funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, all the uh, IR sensors are super expensive at the moment. Sometimes it can go above $20,000. We are making those sensors below a few hundred. So combining those two, that's not launched this year. It's going to be launched next year. Combining those two, this is the only device you can get in the market at that price point. Great. Well, we are out of time. So give it up for Stradio. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now we are going to take our judges backstage and we're going to deliberate. We're going to announce a winner at 3.30, right, Matt? That's right. Jordan's right, so right here. Yes. Jordan's going to run up here right now. Okay. And she's going to say what's going on. Okay. Save the day. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you guys. Uh, please head into deliberation. Make speedy decisions. And uh, we will announce the winner for our hardware battlefield in about half an hour. But rest your weary bones because we have some cool videos we're about to play. Um, they're live roaming coverage. So instead of walking through yourself, we can just watch it right here, right? It's like a win-win. Um, and then we'll see you in about half an hour, okay? Thank you so much.